This afternoon's semifinal game will feature a women's division game between the University of Michigan and the University of Oregon. At this time, we'd like to introduce the players, coaches, and observers participating in this semifinal matchup. We'll start with the University of Michigan. Number four, Becky Moore. Woo! Number five, Rodica Bargav. Number six, Lauren Sweeney. Number ten, Lizzie Gravel. And now, please welcome the University of Oregon players. Beginning with number double zero, Katie Weatherhead. Number two, Christina Whitman. Number three, Rachel Parkle-Owitz. Number four, Bailey Zonifer.
You've got to catch it, obviously, and the whole idea is to work it up the field. It's like basketball, and then once you catch it, you've got to establish a pivot pivot point. Do you have two steps, it looks like? Uh, you get as many steps as it really takes you to stop. So if you're running really fast, you've, you've got to come to a, to a stop, and it's on player's honor. Now, players will sometimes get called for travels. Anytime like that, a disc is either dropped, thrown out of bounds, uh, or knocked down, offense becomes defense. Um, players have 10 seconds to throw the disc. Otherwise, it's also a turn. And there's no picks allowed. So like that would be an example of a... And this is the college nationals. Right. And this is semifinals now, so... All right, and we live right here, so okay. we have to see what's going on. Yeah, it looks like Colorado, the men's team, they'll be playing at 5.30 in the semis. And they're likely to win it and be in the finals against Carleton College. Oh no, not at all. I love seeing people watch the sport, it's, it's great. And there's no points. What this tool is doing on here? It's basically he's holding up all the action.
It's changing the sport. Don't like it. I'm annoyed. I don't understand why CBS is holding up footage. They're like holding up the action. If they have that guy, will just come out there and just stall. I, I don't get it because they're not broadcasting this live. It's not like they have commercial breaks. Unless they're actually. Well, no, they wouldn't do that. Oh my gosh. What? Number four, baby. I don't blame you. I've been trying to get this little uh, flag to help me. It's not doing the greatest job. Yeah, I dare you to throw it to Bailey's girl. That's what's gonna happen every time. Oh gosh, Bailey. Not smart. Travel.
work on. I think Lou just got a team F. A team F for arguing. Man about something. I've No foul call. If anyone stops screaming. Let's get a travel call there. It just came pretty quick.
Dallas Championships to announce the winners of the Callahan Award. Since 1996, the Callahan has been awarded annually to the most valuable player in the college ultimate. It is named after Henry Callahan, who started the ultimate club team at the University of Oregon in 1978 and had a great impact on the sport during its earlier days. Award nominees display superior skill and athleticism, making the incredible plays that make quick games like this so exciting. But the award does go a step further than that. In addition to their on-field success, the players also demonstrate outstanding sportsmanship, leadership, and dedication to the game of ultimate, personifying the spirit of the game on which our favorite sport is built. What makes this award even more special is that it is voted on by current college players, meaning that the Callahan winners have achieved this honor by earning the respect of their competitors. From over 400 open teams competing this year, we now recognize the top five finalists from the Open Division. We're going to announce all finalists one at a time and in no particular order. As each name of the finalists is called, please tell them of the USA Open Banner just to my right. Congratulate so everyone here can congratulate you on this wonderful accomplishment. Then, once all of the finalists are out front, we will announce our winner for the 2011 Callahan Award in the Open Division. Our first finalist is the single most important piece to his team's covered offense. He often finds himself taking charge to start the blow. Receiving the first pass and firing his strike downfield. And whenever he's not initiating the offense, he just flips the game plan by making big grabs in the end zone. The defense can seem to slow down one of them, but it can't take away both. From Henry Callahan's own Oregon, Cody Beal. He always finds himself around this, keeping the offense moving and making big throws whenever they present themselves. These are all important qualities to have, especially when leading your team to its first ever appearance at the college championships. From Colorado College. and look for new ways to help his team win, even if it means taking on a modified role for the past years. This finalist has done just that, keeping his team among the country's elite by focusing more as a thrower who ignites the offense with his pinpoint hucks. Of course, it doesn't hurt that he still has the ability to play shutdown D and dominate as an explosive deep receiver. From Harvard, George Sutton. The fourth pilot is always around this, as his team's offense runs completely through him. Not only is he an automatic reset with great hucks, but his athleticism, will, and hustle put him in a position to always come down with the disc. His drive has pushed him from simply being an athlete into an all-around player. From Florida, Cole Sullivan. While our next finalist is always tough to defend as a receiver, he is best known for his game-changing defense. He draws the toughest matchup game after game 
locks down, down every aim cut and has one of the most intimidating marks in the game. game. From, From California, California, Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz Russell Wynn. Also, you know, same way. Yeah, absolutely. Women broke into quarters for the first time in like 10 years, and Machine has been, you know, a national contender here, but never anything more than 10th, 11th place. So, yeah. Well, I kind of regret the change. You know, West, your equivalent in West is somebody who's apparently in Salt Lake. Right. As far as I know, no one in Northwest has ever talked to it. <laughs> Help. Oh my choices, girls. Choices. <laughs> Oh. 
It's just too easy of in cuts, and there's ah, oh, where's the? Mm. They beat, and my daughter's now with Element, and uh, we lost in Michigan. They're pretty damn good. They got two. Uh, <laughs> Giving, you know, time to develop that. Well, I know that you don't have all my women are helping. I mean, my daughter's coaching a, an elementary school team. You know, but you, you, you can't have dry years and keep it moving. Right. Right. Uh, Injury timeout was called. Goodness, Julia. So good. It's just so much fun to watch play. Man. Travel again. Travel. Again? Now travel. Stay there. Bailey! <laughs> Come on, Aubrey, you don't need a foul. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no contest, count goes back to zero.
Foul call. No contest. Put this one in. Travel called. He's upholding it. Pick all downfield. Foul off this. Foul off the disc. CBS getting pissed at well. Thank 
five.
Not sure the call, but it stays with Oregon. Honestly, the best jersey, the jersey I would trade for is a long sleeve UNCW Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sockeye wears Oregon. 